Good morning. Do I need to stay on this step or can... It's funny, we were talking about that earlier. Paul's the one that won't stop and I'm the one going, keep going, keep going. You don't need to stop for everybody. <laughs> and um, those of you who don't me, know me, um, Paul and I passed the church over in Casino. We've been there 15 years now, which I find very hard to believe. But our little girl was only two or 18 months old, nearly two, when we um, moved there. And now she's in year 11, doing her year 11 and 12. Um, I have three children, I have two older boys, and I became a grandmother at the end of last year. So I am Gma to a little grandson, and he is delightful. But I don't know what happened because I became a grandmother, and now I collect Matchbox cars. <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> I have so many Matchbox cars, he, he can't even play with them yet, but they're there waiting for him to get a bit older. I know a few faces, and um, I'm really sorry, I'm not great with names. So if you have met me and know me and I don't know your name, I apologise now. It is an absolute privilege to be here this morning. And uh, I'm really big on um, positioning yourself. So this morning you've come into the church, you've come into this building and you've come to worship God and to hear a word. And that's positioning yourself. You could have stayed home in bed. It was cold this morning. I could have stayed home in bed. Um, Or you could have gone to the beach. It's a beautiful day outside. There are so many different things you could have done. And you're here this morning. And so is God. And he knows each and every one of us individually. And I'm a big believer in that God can meet us where we're at at any time. Yes, when we're at home. Yes, when we're at the beach. Yes, when we're in bed. Maybe not so much when we're watching Netflix. But even through some television shows, God can meet us right where we're at and something can be said. So I believe this morning that you're here for a reason nothing's by chance. I encourage you to lean in, hear what I have to say. I may not be that, well, I know I'm not the best preacher you would have ever heard, but I know that God is here and I know he's given me this word for you this morning. Uh, What a great facility that you have. I I went to the very first Arise meeting at the GSAC building, getting chairs out and putting up, oh, the chairs in, chairs out. That's not a fun gig. I do not like that one. And uh, look at it now. Look at what, It's incredible um, what God has done with the Arise Church. And Jackie and Alan are incredible people. I want to share just briefly how I met Jackie. Um, it was actually a really low point in my life. I'd lost a few loved ones that were um, in my family. And uh, Venice over in Ballina invited me to a ladies' conference. That was for ladies' leaders. And I normally don't go to the Queensland ones because... I'm from Coss Harbour and we used to always go to the New South Wales ones. And I really didn't want to go. I was just in that place of, you know what, (laughs) I really don't want to go. Then she goes, oh, and I've got this other lady coming with me. And, um, you know, I think you'll be great. You'll get on great. And I'm like, I really, really don't want to go now. Because I don't want to go and meet someone new and then have to spend two nights with them when I don't even want to be at the conference. So I really didn't want to go. But I'd heard some great great messages about positioning yourself. And uh, I had been in the position I had been in for a little while. I mean, grief, if you've ever gone through grief, it it takes a little while to work through it. Uh, But I really felt God told me to go. And I could have had a lot of excuses because it was beef week that week. (laughs) Those who know me, I'm a big beef week fan. I think I'm the only person maybe in casino that decorates for beef week. I have cows that only come out of the cupboard for beef week. (laughs) It's a true story. Shay goes, Mum, I'm older now. You really don't have to keep doing this. No, the cows must come out. But I really wasn't even in the mood for cows or beef week or brekkie with the butchers or any of that. So it was kind of a good excuse to get out of town and not have to be part of that. Anyway, long story short, I went. Um, It was an interesting weekend. I thought I could hide a little since I didn't know anybody, but it was one of those conferences where you get into small groups and everyone pulls out their heart. And I, oh, not really what I was wanting. But in doing that, you know what, everyone's got a story and everyone is going through something. I mean, a lovely lady there who was really struggling with cancer, and this is about seven years ago, she has passed away since. 
But I got to hear her story. And I positioned myself where I could speak into someone else's life and not just be so consumed with my own. And that's where I met Jackie. And you know what? She's an incredible woman and someone who I call a dear friend. And I've gone to her with a few things in my life. And if I hadn't have listened to that voice of, you know, get out of yourself and go and do what I've asked you to do, I would never have met her in the capacity that I met her. And, um, yeah, I consider Jackie a very good friend. And a comment that I say a lot in my church and to my ladies is, on the other side of what we're going through, someone needs you. And I really believe that's for people here this morning, that comment, that statement. On the other side of whatever it is you're going through, someone needs you. You cannot stay where you are. You cannot stay in your hurt. I could not stay in my grief. You cannot stay in your disappointments, your failures or your regrets. You can't stay there. There's a big world out there that needs you. Your family needs you. Your friends need you. Those that, bring a, that, God, those that God brings across your path. Those people need you. And yes, we have hurts, we have disappointments, we have frustrations, we have grief, we have all those emotions. And can I say it's important that we acknowledge them and that we stop for a moment and have those feelings. But we cannot afford to camp there. We must move through. And I really believe God gives us the ability to do that. And for me at that moment, it was going to a conference that I really did not want to go to. But I know to be obedient to the voice of God and move through that. I need to put my glasses on for a second. I even printed it really big. <laughs> really big. <laughs> So the highlight of that weekend was meeting um, Jackie. And can I encourage you all to lean in this morning? I really believe God will and can meet you right where you're at. So positioning yourself. You've already positioned yourself here. So just give it another half hour or so of leaning in and listening. And let's see what God can do. This morning I want to read from Galatians 6, 1 to 10. And the title of it in my Bible is Doing Good to All. It says, brothers and sisters, this is from verse 6. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instructions in the, wor in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap. Will reap destruction. Whoever sows... To please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Verse 9 is where I'm going to concentrate this morning. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Especially those who belong to the family of believers. There's a lot in that section of Galatians. And the Apostle Paul wrote this to the church in Galatia, encouraging them to continue living in a way that was consistent to what they believed. Knowing that to not live in the flesh, but to trust the Spirit, and to give your life to doing good, was going to be tiring. So he was encouraging them not to tire. Now I thought, I've heard that scripture and that verse a lot, do not become weary doing good. And I used to think, what a funny scripture. Like, isn't that what we do? Isn't that what Christians do? Isn't, it's sort of a no-brainer. That's what we do. We do good. And I wondered why it was there to warn us about not growing weary from that. Well, 
And I thought, God does not rescue us from sin to then do nothing with us. He means for his people to give their lives, what precious little time we have on this earth, to doing good. As we mentioned before with Paul, I'm married to a man who does not tire ever, and I mean ever, from doing good. If he could help you in his sleep, he would. That's just, that's just who he is. One of the things that I love about him, but one of the things that drives me incredibly insane, because he wants to help everyone. Those of you who know Paul, am I right? And he doesn't get, he doesn't get tired of helping people. He gets tired physically, but he does not tire of helping people. I'm not quite like Paul. I tire of helping people. <laughs> and I didn't get that scripture, but you know, people take advantage of you. I'm sorry that I've got to look at you above my glasses, but it helps. But people um, take advantage of you. People use you. People rob from you. People take your energy. <laughs> it's tiring helping people. It's emotional. It costs you emotionally, physically, financially to help people. And uh, the last four months, our area all around has had it pretty rough. Uh, with the floods and then, and then the second flood. And uh, Paul works with Global Care and he's been working in our region for the four months now, five, days, five to six days a week. His phone never stops. Um, when he's home, he's answering messages, taking calls. He sleeps, wakes up and repeats. There's so many opportunities out there to be good. And uh, we do this as a team. I'm good with that until the attack comes. When the attack comes, I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. Tap. Give up. Had enough. There's other things we can be doing, Paul. Why aren't we fixing our church? Our church had water through it. I was in there the other day. It's a very sad state of affairs. We've had our carpet ripped up and our kitchen's ripped out and walls half off. And uh, believing that soon we'll be able to get that fixed. Everyone's very quiet. <laughs> I'm really not a terrible person. I do like helping people. <laughs> But Paul's a whole nother level. Like, there's a whole nother level of that. And um, I just say to him, Dale, what, you, you can stop. We don't have to keep doing this like this at this level. We can tone it back a little. And uh, when the attacks come, I, I can't stand people pulling him down when he's helping. And you can't please everyone all the time, right? And some people want, want things a certain way and you can't always do it that way. And anyway, that kind of attack come and I was out. And then I was in... Uh, um, actually, I've got to tell you a funny quick story. While I was actually doing this message... I'm not going to mention names. You won't know them anyway. But we have a couple in our, in our church. And uh, I'm writing this message and they ring me. Now, they don't work. I've been in casino 15 years. They don't work at all which is not a bad thing, but they have plenty of time. Anyway, they were ringing Paul to get him to do something for them and the, the wife had said, can I just talk to, church, to Paul at church tomorrow? Oh, this is online, isn't it? <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> I forget about all this new technology with preaching. Oh dear, God forgive me. <laughs> anyway, it's a funny thing because they rang Paul to ask him to help them and they were going to talk to him at church today but she was letting me know she couldn't go to church today. And I said, oh, why is that? Oh, well, I asked, oh, no, I asked my husband he said, oh, no, I'll stay home tomorrow. Oh, okay. And I was like, why, why is that? Oh, he just needs to rest. And I said, well, what's he doing today? And she said, oh, he's resting today too. I was like, okay. Um... <laughs> She said, oh, we might put the TV evangelist guy on tomorrow morning on telly. I went, oh, that's a shame when you've got a church you can go to. And she said, oh, well, I just think that's what we're doing. And when I got off the phone, I said to Paul, well, they can ring the TV evangelist guy to get them to help him. <laughs> 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 
why are they ringing us when they're going to sit at home and listen to the TV guy? Anyway, it was just so funny because I was writing this at the time and God said, Megan, don't tire of doing good, especially to those in the house of God, which they are, just not this morning. It's funny. Oh, dear. You've got to laugh or you do an awful lot of crying and screaming. Anyway, I was in church a Sunday or two ago and Paul read this scripture about not becoming weary doing good. And I got that ah moment of now I know why God wrote it there. Because of all these things, people are exhausting. I'm exhausting to someone, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure, if not just to Paul, I'm exhausting. And I was also reminded of Peter 5.8. And Peter 5.8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, lion looking for someone to devour. We can't forget that. We can't forget we have an enemy wanting to take us out at any time especially when we're doing good. Now, I heard here, when, when the floods hit, you guys were doing something with Stockpot, and I heard that someone come in and damage some of their equipment. They were doing good, and the enemy wanted to take him out. And Paul reminded me of a story. He's been over in Korokai. He gets over there at least once, if not twice a week, to help out in Korokai. And there was a painter over there, and I don't know where he's come from, but he was helping people in their homes and someone had stolen his car keys in the morning and that night they came back, stole his car with all of his paints in them, all of his tools in it and burn it out. Just literally for the fun of it. And I get so cranky with that. He was doing good. I don't know if he was a Christian man or not and that doesn't make any difference. He was doing good and someone would do that to his whole, that's his income, that's his job. We can't forget there's an enemy out there. Because once we do, that's when we're going to slip up. Because like me, I get angry when I'm tired. <laughs> when I grow weary, I get angry. God doesn't want me angry at people. That's not going to save people. He doesn't want me angry. He wants me loving them and doing good. But don't forget there's an enemy there. We need to be alert and we need to be, to be sober of mind. What is it that God's showing you this morning? Is there anything that's hindering you in doing good? Have you grown weary? Do you sometimes think, oh, not today. I can't help anyone today. Our enemy wants us to quit. That is 100% sure. I just wrote a couple of things down that we can do to put in place to protect ourselves from growing weary. Number one is pray. So when, when we've had these attacks come at home and someone's gone off about something, um, I just say, Paul, we really need to pray. You need to pray when you're going out every day because there's one particular woman who just won't let up on him. And I just said, I believe she's planted there to bring strife, to bring strife and, to, and if not cause him <laughs> to want to quit, cause me to want to quit. And no one wants a nagging wife saying, quit, dull, or else. He doesn't need that. He's got enough going on. So always be praying. Know that you're doing God's will. I think if we know that we know that we know that we're doing God's will, it helps us to keep ourselves um, not weary, not tired. It helps to keep us on track. For, this one particularly is for Paul, if he listens to this. Turn your phone off. At times, especially at dinner or at least on silent. And might I say maybe around 10 p.m. turn it off? Paul had a call at 1 o'clock this morning and I wasn't happy because he wasn't in the room and I was and the phone woke me up. No one wants to have tired me again. Turn your phone off. If, if, again, if not off, at least on silent at times because people will still need you later and you can call them back. And uh, you don't need to be available 24-7, seven days a week. Take time out to rest. Jesus took time out. He'd often go off on his own and pray and take some time just by himself. And uh, my last point was to be alert and sober because we have an enemy that is waiting. 
In closing, I just would like to encourage us all not to grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time will we reap a harvest if we do not give up. A harvest of joy, a harvest of souls, we will reap a harvest. And I just want to look at verse 10. It says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, and at the moment throughout our, especially our region, but throughout the world, there is plenty of opportunity. Let us do good to all people. And then this one was for me for last night, especially to those who belong in the family of believers. We need to look out for each other. If someone's pulling a brother or sister down, speak up for them. And don't just listen. Speak up, speak out, be kind to each other, look out for each other, be generous to one another, and do good. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for your word of encouragement. I thank you for each person that is here this morning, Lord, and the families that they represent. God, that you would bless them abundantly. Help us to see the opportunities that you give us to do good. Believing, Lord, that you will supply all that we need. You'll supply all that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I don't know everyone here this morning, and I would hate to not give anyone the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Maybe if you're here for the first time, or maybe you've been coming quite a few times, but if I ask you if you have a relationship with God, you may not be sure. Um, I'd love to talk with you or if you've come with a friend you could talk with them but please don't leave the building without asking questions that you have Um, these guys would love to talk to you and uh, like I said I'm I'm very happy to talk to you and again thank thank you so much for having me it's been a great privilege to be here this morning